Today I will show you some photo manipulation basics, so let's start. Hi guys, my name is Nemanja Sekulic and welcome to another fun episode. Today I will show you how to blend two images together in Photoshop, I will show you some photo manipulation basics. But before we start, let me tell you something that you need to pay attention on before you start retouching the images. Either you're shooting your own images, backgrounds and the models, or you're searching them on some stock sites or Google images, etc. You need to pay attention on two really important things. First, it's both the model and the background need to be lit in the same way, to have same lighting conditions or really close ones. All right? And the second, it's both the model and the background need to be in the same perspective, to be shooted from the same angle and with the same lens or really close ones again. In that way, you will achieve really great results, realistic photo manipulations. Otherwise, it won't be so great. So let's jump straight into Photoshop and let's have fun. All right, guys, today we will use this image as a background and we will use this girl here with the post box or mailbox here as a model. So first thing what I want to do here is to extract both of them from this background. And for that, I will use a pen tool. If you're not familiar with the pen tool, you can watch my previous tutorial about the pen tool and come back here to this one. Or you can use some other method to extract this uh, girl and the post box from this background. So let's start P on a keyboard for a pen tool. Let's zoom it a little bit and I will place the first anchor point here. And now I will extract this mailbox out of the background. But because this is a really boring process, I will definitely speed up this part. And I will come back as soon as I finish this. All right. Alright guys, as you can see now, I made this part a little bit bigger and this part of the concrete here and her legs a little bit bigger. And I did purposely, I will show you that, uh, later why I did this. Okay, and now when I finish with this uh, pen tool, I close the pad, I will press Ctrl or Command key and enter to load this selection. And now I want to refine the selection here a little bit and I will press W on the keyboard to enter the quick selection or magic one tool, either of those two, and go to the select and mask option. And now I will make this brush a little bit smaller and just refine the edges here. Just a little bit, okay. Only of this part of her jacket. And I will leave everything as it is. Press OK and that's it. Now I will click here on the layer mask icon to put layer mask on it and yeah, I forgot to do this. I will use a quick selection tool for this to quickly select this part out like so, let me see. And now I'll press alter option key and backspace to fill that. And I will use a pen tool. Let me see a little bit harder, but not 100%, something around 80 and just fix this a little bit, something like so. It's not so crucial, but I'll do it anyway. Okay. That's not bad at all. All right. That's nice. And now I will go and I will get rid of this. No, I will leave the layer mask. And let me see, just drag it on our background here, like so. And let's position it. Let's see where is the edge? It's here, okay. And let's position it somewhere here, maybe. All right, why I didn't get rid of this part? Well, why I didn't extract her hair as, it, as I should be, as I should do normally? Well, because sometimes you can get without that you can blend some part of the image with the background and sometimes that part the, that process can be much much easier than to extract 
every hair here and uh, maybe the shadows here from uh, this part of the mailbox and her shoes etc okay i will show you how to blend it this really nice and easy but before we do that we can see that she has some yellowish tint on the pants and this concrete it's a little bit more yellowish than this one and we need to fix that first for that i will use uh, curves adjustment layers all right click on the curves and i will clip the curves adjustment layer to affect only the girl i will rename this to girl or model model okay and then let's go here to the curves and i want to make this a little bit colder because it's too warm and i will go to the blue channel and bring in some blue color something like so it's pretty much nice now it's much better as you can see her pants before and after it's not so yellowish it's really nice bluish color and the concrete it's neutral gray it's not like yellowish all right that's really nice and now we can have fun with blending this but before we start that i want to rotate Control command t on the model layer and i will rotate this a little bit just like so and maybe pull this part a little bit down something something like so all right and both of them uh, model and the background are shooted with a 14 millimeter fuji uh, lens it's equivalent in a full frame 21 millimeter lens all right and now let's go and blend first this part here with the background how to do that well it's really really easy uh, you just need to make this part of the sky a little bit brighter because both the model and the background are shooted on a cloudy day and that's really nice. Okay, I will use a curves adjustment layer, clip this curve to affect only the model layer and make the highlights brighter, something like so. As you can see here and here it's really nice blend. And now I will go to the model uh, layer mask and just with the brush and really soft one, 0% hardness, I'll just blend that, erase this part that I don't need. And that's really nice. As you can see, it's really, really nice blend. And if I turn this off, see, I still have that parts of the old sky, but with this, it's really nice. The same thing it's with the concrete here, make it brighter. Again, new curves adjustment layer, make, uh, yeah, I need to clip it like so and just make it brighter and I will uh, watch it this part to blend because I don't need this part at all. Just make it something like so. It's nice and all right, just go to the model here and erase everything that we don't need like so. Oops, it's too much. You need to be more careful here. Okay, something like so and that's really nice let's bring back the shadow here because i erased that too okay and maybe erase this part here and let me see before and after before and after it's really really nice and easy blend you don't need to be so careful to extract every part of the image here to have realistic blend that's really nice all right and let me see yeah uh, this is too much of course I need, I made a mistake and sometimes it's great to make a mistake because you can learn better from your mistakes, right? I didn't hide this uh, layer mask because now the whole layer is brighter and I don't need that. I want to turn it black and I want to use white brush and to brighten only this part of that layer where the concrete is only that and that's nice and i can bring back the shoes here like so and maybe to brighten maybe 20 percent opacity brush and just brighten this part and now as you can see this is really really nice blend let me show you before adjustments and after adjustments before and after you just saw how you can blend some part of the images with another part of the images or the background seamlessly without extracting that model or subject completely from the background. Remember this trick because sometimes it's time saving. It can be really, really handy. 
All right, let's go now and tweak some parts of the image. For example, this highlight here, because this, this highlights, it's not so realistic now, because on the right side here, we have those bushes or trees. I don't know what it is. And actually this highlight would, wouldn't be existed here. And of course it will be some greenish tint in this mailbox. First, let's create a new layer and clip it again to affect only the model layer here. And I will use a brush and with Alter Option key, I will sample the color, maybe this one. And with maybe 20 opacity brush, smaller one, I will just paint over this highlight and this one here too. Let's use this color here and just to fix that because I don't want the highlight. Just paint over it like so. And it's much easier when you have a tablet than with a mouse, of course. And you can go and maybe sample this color and fix these parts here too. Maybe a little bit of these highlights here. And that's basically it. Now let's go and use maybe curse and clip it again to affect only this layer with the pause box and the girl and go to the green and add a little bit of the green as a reflection from the bushes here. Of course, we will invert the layer mask with control command I and now we will use a white brush and just slowly paint some greenish tint here on the mailbox, especially here. That's really, really nice. All right. And another curve adjustment layer and make it a little bit darker. Okay. Something like so. Again, control command I to invert that and just make this part a little bit darker because here it's, uh, it's darker than it was here and this part of the mailbox will be a little bit darker, of course, and maybe this part too, and maybe even this part here, just slowly build the scene with the 20% opacity brush. That's really, really nice. As you can see, now it's looking really nice and realistic. And one more thing that I would like to add here to make it a little bit more realistic for uh, for the, the eye, it's to add this crack on the concrete. And I'll just copy this layer and paste it here. And what I want to do is to desaturate that. You can use a keyboard shortcut, Shift Control I, or uh, Shift Control U, or Shift Command U. Just desaturate it like so. And then I will use the levels, clip it on that, and make it darks a little bit darker and whites a lot brighter like so and put it in the multiply blending mode because multi multiply blending mode doesn't see the whites right whites will be invisible and here it is and now i will use this control command t and we can go right click to the perspective and just change the perspective like so and then again to the free transform and just transform this we can even rotate, maybe flip horizontally like so, and rotate it like this, press control command and just move the corners here as you think it should be. Maybe something like so here, it's not bad. And maybe make it a little bit bigger, press okay. And now I will create a layer mask on these cracks or crack, okay. And with the black brush, 100% opacity, I will paint out this part because actually I don't need this part of the image, only this crack here. Okay. And then you can move it, move it here like so, and you can use warp tool and warp it a little bit, reposition this as you like. And that's really nice looking crack here. All right, let me see. This is really nice without that. And with that, it's really, really nice small detail. Of course, you can add some other crack or some 
other things here to uh, create some other eye-catching uh, effect, detail, and you're done. Right, we're basically done here, but I want to do a few more things to remove those guys from the background and to color correct this image a little bit. So let's do that. First, let's add a new layer just above the background and I will name it clone because I will clone those guys out of the background and I will hide the model because I don't need it for now. And with the stamp tool here, clone stamp tool, I will press and hold alter option key, sample this part and just clone it here like so and maybe add this part here and just clone those guys here like so that's nice and i will add a layer mask here use harder brush like so black brush oh sorry i need a harder brush not a clone tool all right and i will remove this that's nice and if i bring back the model see it's really really nice let me see if i can fix fix this a little bit better like so that's nice and now nobody will know that anything funny is going all the way down below and now let's color correct this image first let's go to the first layer here the highest one and now i will load the color lookup adjustment layers and load one of all these interesting 3d LUTs. if you're not familiar what the 3d LUTs or lookup tables are you can watch my tutorial about this all right and let's load this kodak one it's really nice and it's too much i will lower the opacity maybe around 75 or so and now i'll merge all layers together again shift Control alt e or shift command option e on a mac it's a famous shortcut and now i will convert this layer into black and white with shift Control u or shift command u on a keyboard that's really nice and i will add a little bit contrast to this layer i will use a curves for that Control command m to allow the curves this is destructive way because Control command m m m m m m m my control command M doesn't work. Let's go to the adjustment curves control command M. I don't know why the shortcut key doesn't work. I need to fix that, All right? I will add a little bit more contrast here, like so. And now I will put this layer into the soft light blending mode and you will see what will happen. Soft light and boom, adds a lot of contrast here. Of course, it's too much and I will lower this to maybe 50 or something like so 40 percent before and after before and after that's nice and the final thing what i like to do is to again merge all things together shift Control alt e or shift command option e on a mac and go to the filters and camera row filter one of my favorite things for color correction and then i will add vignette a little bit maybe around 10 or so let me see something like so um, you can dehaze or not, maybe a touch, like so. And then let's go here to the hue and saturation. And I will change the hue of the green, like so. And I will change these yellows to the orange a little bit, like so, because I like this mailbox to pop out a little bit. And go to the saturation, lower the saturation of the greens and add more saturation to the yellows and orange like so it's really really nice maybe to make it even more orange something like so and we can open the shadows a little bit but let's bring back the blacks that's really really nice and let me see before and after before and after it's looking really nice and interesting let me see that's great before and after before and after and before and after all these color corrections and after before and after nice and that's it for today i hope that you like this tutorial and that you find it useful that you learn something new out of it of course this was just the basics of photo manipulations and it was really easy example how to blend two images into one composite image 
Don't forget that sometimes you don't need to be so precise while extracting the model from the background or some part of the model from the background because you can use some other approach to blend the model with the background much, much easier and to save your time. And don't forget about those tips that you need to find the images that have same lighting and same perspective. And at the end, you need to match the colors of all elements in the image to have the same tonality. All right. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment below. I will be glad to answer them. See you next week in the next fun episode. Bye bye. All right. Either you're shooting your own. <laughs>